No. Okay. Uh, you're. Are you still unable to hire your own lawyer? Are you working somewhere? Why not? Just curious. I mean, yeah, you know, yeah, you know, working is like your path to independence. A six-year-old, according to this probable cause affidavit and the grand jury indictment. You're looking at me or him, or are you paying attention, or is this yes. boring to you? No, I'm listening. All right. Uh, you, here's the grand jury who's accusing you, not me. Here's the grand jury. They thought that. Okay. Uh, this person, do you live with this person? Uh, we did at the moment. We're working. Well, that's not the right thing. So you did at the moment. You, you did then. Yes. Okay. Since this event happened and you posted a bond, have y'all been separated? I mean, we still see each other. You can't do that. Also, because of the baby. I don't care what it is. Welcome to Judge Stevens' courtroom, where today's docket features a trio of cases that have caught the judge's attention for a familiar reason. His clear stance that defendants should secure their own legal representation instead of relying on court-appointed attorneys funded by taxpayers. The judge strongly believes that individuals should take responsibility for their own actions, including all financial aspects of their defense. The first defendant is urged by Judge Stevens to find employment that would empower him to afford a proper defense. However, it's the last two defendants who are confronted with more serious allegations, prompting the judge to emphasize the necessity of obtaining proper lawyers to advocate on their behalf. Stay tuned to see how this all plays out today. Come on up, sir. You're, you're Brad Steele in 23CR2283, right? You have to speak. And we use the audible languages. Okay. Uh, have you had a chance to talk to your attorney who was appointed to represent you, which was David Grove? No. Okay. Uh, you're. Are you still unable to hire your own lawyer? Are you working somewhere? Why not? Just curious. I mean, yeah, you know, yeah, you know, working is like your path to independence. Are you? Yeah. Okay. Good. How old are you, sir? Are you uh, going to school somewhere? No. Well, so, what do you do during the day? During the day, I mean, just hang around. What do you do? What, what's your? Do you have a skill that that you? Yeah. What, what's keeping you from that? Okay. Then. I don't know if anybody ever suggested this, but why don't you do it? Okay. All right. um, otherwise, you know, you're just dependent, which is not the way to be. You know, you just don't want to be hanging on uh, to other folks. You want to be your own person and be independent and make something out of your life. But anyway, what we're going to do is reset this for four weeks, four weeks. And Mr. Grove, your attorney is uh, medically unable. Uh, a, unavailable today to be here. So uh, his cases are having to be reset for four weeks. You can get a resetting from that nice lady. Thank you. Work on that uh, job core thing. That, okay. that sounds good. Omar Cardenas is next. Omar Cardenas. Two cases. I need Johnny Howard, please. Johnny Howard, is he in press, please? No, Judge, he's outside. Um, he's across the road out there. You know, red, red sweatshirt. There he is. Yes. Okay, go ahead. So you want? Yes, you're, you're, by the way, we call cause number. 2341401, the state of Texas versus Johnny Howard, and you were the second. Yes. And you were charged with the state jail felony of injury uh, to a child. And go ahead. Yes, Your Honor. Uh, I'm filling in for Mr. Bruce Smith today, and he previously hit all record. 
uh, defendant's motion to modify bond restrictions, uh, asking for the ankle monitor, to, ankle monitor to be removed at this time due to the defendant not having any issues up to, up to this point uh, and it being a financial hardship on the defendant while he's looking for work, Your Honor. Um, GPS device is for, um, you're talking about the GPS device. Yes. There, there's, there's a reason for that in cases like this. Uh, this is injury to a child. It's alleged he punched out the six-year-old. So the GPS device is to ensure that he's not around children. I understand that, Jerry. And if something bad happens, we'll know who was there. And... Uh, there was no victim contact. I mean, th that's why the GPS is just, it didn't come out of the sky. It's because if you're going to punch out a six-year-old, according to this probable cause affidavit and the grand jury indictment, you're looking at me or him, or are you paying attention, or is this yes. boring to you? No, I'm listening. All right. Uh, you, here's the grand jury who's accusing you, not me. Here's the grand jury. They thought that. There was an uh, uh, investigation and uh, family services were in, was involved. The child had to be, the child made outcry to someone Then was at Garth House. Police investigated. And, you know, the way America is in the way we look at uh, taking care of children when children are at risk and are harmed. This is a state jail felony, which carries with it up to two years in the state jail. It is a felony. We treat it seriously. Uh, yeah. That's what the GPS is all about, is if he's going to do this to a child, uh, children are at risk until we can ferret out what happened here and uh, determine whether he's unsafe for others. I understand that's why it's there. Situation. Yeah, that's why it's there. We're, we're, we're sensitive about children and people who aren't, I don't even understand that. And the people who put me in this office want uh, elderly people and children and those who are, aren't able to defend themselves from a 42-year-old uh, man uh, are going to be in safe, uh, in a safe harbor. Sure. What's next? Uh, Request thirty day reset, Your Honor. It is granted Thank you, and for announcement. Thank you. Thank you. You don't have any contact with that child, do you? No, no sir. He has not. Uh, get a reset. Thank you. Right. We'll give you a reset. Thank you, Judge. May yes, sir. Missed. Your excuse. Thank, Thank you. you. Yes, Andrew Perez. You're Andrew Perez. Yes, sir. Okay. You were charged here, uh, twenty three CR one eight five seven with. Uh, the third degree felony of assault family violence by choking. And this is a uh, uh, Miriam Aviles. Uh, do you know that person? Yeah. Uh, and Okay. Uh, this person, do you live with this person? Uh, we did at the moment. We're working. Well, that's not the right thing. So you did at the moment. We, you did then. Yes. Okay. Since this event happened and you posted a bond, have y'all been separated? I mean, we still see each other. You can't do that. Well, also, because of the baby. I don't care what it is. The rules, the bond rules are in, yes, until the court says otherwise, that's to prevent further problems. It's a violation of your bond, which which this court is strict about. I would revoke your bond and you would be in jail with no bond if you defy the bond conditions. But do you understand what this requires of you until we can get you a lawyer and Get this the, in the DA together to try to resolve this. You cannot be having contact with the victim, even if the victim wants that. That's not the rule. Because this happens, and, and historically, people who have problems like this 
too often uh, they say, oh, I'll never do that again. And then right back and then somebody gets really hurt and then the government is to blame. And and that's not the way it's going to be. It's not going to be the court or the lawyers. You've got to follow the rules. And she does, too. Which means you can't have any contact until this court orders otherwise. Do you understand? Yes, sir. Sure. That's because if I find out otherwise, you're going to sit in jail because I, I will revoke the bond. Too often, people get back together on their own, and then bad things happen. And then we go, well, there was a bond condition to prevent that from happening, and people disobeyed it. So someone's going to be held accountable. Okay. Uh, do you, are you getting a lawyer? Well, uh, or do you work somewhere and get it? Yeah. Are you employed? Okay. Right. You have to, you, you can look, you're looking at up to 10 years in prison for this charge. And I'm reading. This probable cause affidavit, which is very serious. And and you're charged with choking uh, somebody, and I mean that that can that can result in death. I mean, it, it, it's essentially you know, a, attempted murder in many cases. That's serious. So we're going to treat it seriously, and until we can resolve this, okay? So don't see her. You need to get a lawyer to help you on this case. So I was, uh, when I was in jail, I was, uh, the judge asked me if I wanted to get appointed a free lawyer. And I are you employed pay. somewhere? Yes, sir. How, uh, how much do you make an hour or what's your income? Um, the, the quest, here, here's the deal. You don't get a lawyer just because you want one. You get a lawyer because not only do you want one, you need one, but also you get an appointed lawyer only if you're unavail if you're unable to afford one. Otherwise, all the taxpayers would run out of money because we got a lot of people who are charged with crimes. And when they make a mistake, it's like my parents taught me, you make a mistake, you got to pay for your mistake to fix it. Not others. Like me, a taxpayer. I'm not going to pay for your mistakes. I end up doing it a lot of times, but I'm, I don't want to. That's not the plan. You're supposed to follow the rules and everything. But we're, until this gets worked out, you're going to get your own lawyer. Now, I don't know who the lawyer, who the judge was, but that's not the test. You want one. You have to be unable to afford one. Where do you work? American though, Okay. How much do you make an hour or what's your salary? 23. An hour? That's $50,000. You're going to hire your own lawyer. We're not going to. I wouldn't last in this job long with the taxpayers and the voters who felt like I'm like people who make $50,000. They should be paying for your lawyer when you're charged with them. And, but that's what's no. normal. Your Honor, I completely understand. Oh, good. Given if you, you seem like a person. I'm reading this, and there are certain things y'all need to do is be careful about drinking too much. Obviously, Definitely. that led to both of you, led to this in, indictment by a grand jury, and here you are today. Which probably wouldn't have happened had you y'all been sober, maybe. I don't think you act like this normally. I don't see any other criminal history. So you make a mistake, fix it. Move on with your life and do better. Okay. I think you're able to do that. But I'm going to give you 30 days to go hire a lawyer, talk to somebody, and then come back and uh, get a resetting from that lady. And also, speaking of ladies, you can't have any contact with this person. Or else, you know, your bond can be adjusted with that. Okay. Yes, Thanks. Sir. All right. Please get a resetting. Mr. Burbank, 
We have Aaron Cotton. All comments, viewpoints, interpretations, and insights expressed in this video are for education and entertainment purposes. All individuals featured in the video are to be presumed innocent until proven guilty in a court of law. Please do not attempt to contact, locate, or engage with any individuals featured in the video.